Tuesday marks three weeks until the presidential election, and you might be surprised to hear where Donald Trump held a rally last night. Very blue, California, where he needled Kamala Harris in her home state and warned Governor Gavin Newsom over disaster relief. Here with me now from Florida is Congressman Byron Donald, a supporter of Donald Trump. Uh, we have a lot to get to. I want to start with your state of Florida. Hurricane Milton devastated uh, your the state generally and parts of your district as well. President Biden is in Florida today. How is your community doing? Uh, we're recovering. Uh, we need uh, power to be restored. I know work crews uh, and different power companies are working round the clock to do that. Uh, there are people in my district, but I know throughout Florida, who took on flooding in their homes. Uh, so they're in the process now of having to, you know, get the muck out of their houses and try to rebuild. For some of my residents, uh, they just finished rebuilding from Hurricane Ian two years ago, and now they have to restart that process. So that's that's very devastating uh, uh, for those families, and we're going to be with them every step of the way. In terms of just restoration for Southwest Florida in particular, uh, once we get power back on throughout the entire county, we'll we'll finish the rebuilding process once again. Yeah. Well, uh, Congressman, as you were just talking about the devastation there uh, from a natural disaster last night, the former president threatened to withhold wildfire aid from California over the state's water and environmental rules. Listen to what he said. We're going to take care of our farmers. We're going to take care of your water situation. And we'll force it down his throat. And we'll say, Gavin, if you don't do it, we're not giving you any of that fire money that we send you all the time for all the far, forest fires that you have. Are you comfortable with that, particularly given how you are seeing firsthand how important it is for federal help in a time of natural disaster? Well, actually, Dana, this is a great question. I think when you look at Florida versus California, uh, taking in hurricane force winds and massive flooding is one thing. There's not much to say that Florida can do to prevent that. You compare that with California's environmental policy. A lot of their forest fires are mostly caused um, because the state of California blocks uh, the management of their lands. They don't clear the underbrush. We do that here in Florida, which is why you don't have the major issues of massive, massive forest fires raging through our state. But California doesn't do the simple work of clearing underbrush. So who, who that really puts at risk are the citizens of California. And this is, in my view, radical environmental policy decades long in, in that state. And so what ends up happening is that taxpayers have to flip the bill for this every single year. Well, the topography I think what Donald Trump California, is really getting Florida, at as you is know, that California should actually take care of this problem as well. As you know, it is very different, very different. But if you but leave fuel on the on the ground in terms of branches and underbrush, it does contribute to larger forest fires. So, it simply does. So are you saying that you're comfortable with President Trump saying that if he is elected again, he will withhold federal aid for fires in California? No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. I'm not comfortable with that. And I think Congress is going to weigh in on this heavily. And of course, we're going to do what needs to be done. But so California does have to look at their land management issues in the future. They have to look at that, Dana. And we have to be. Uh, we have to be responsible with the dollars that the federal government is going to be spending. We're always going to be there for the American people. Make no mistake about okay. that. But California does need to have a responsibility to clean up their their lands. Let me uh, turn to uh, the topic of what Kamala Harris is doing uh, this coming week, particularly Monday and Tuesday. She's got several events courting black voters. I, I know that you are talking about uh, the black vote coming out, particularly black men for Donald Trump. You're trying to help him along with that. Uh, to that point, can you talk specifically about what Donald Trump would do policy wise in a second term to help black Americans? Sure. And, and thank you for that question. What Donald Trump is going to do is going to be qu actually quite similar to what he did in his first term. When you lower tax rates, when you cut these reckless and crazy policies that are now in the Kamala Harris administration and you cut those those uh, those regulations down, what it does is it frees up the ability for businesses to thrive, for people to be able to earn more money, for them to be able to keep more money in their pockets. 
all of his economic policies actually have a stabilizing effect on prices and they grow our economy. You couple that with his energy policies, you call it, he calls it drill baby drill, but what it is is being energy dominant in the United States of America. That also allows for us to put a, a cap on these massive price increases under the Kamala Harris administration. What that means in particular for black families is that you are you have an ability to earn more money, keep more money, wages actually growing um, when you adjust them for inflation. And then the big stat, and this happened during the first Trump administration, nobody likes to talk about it. I heard Senator, Senator Warnock mention it. Wages adjusted for inflation were massively up under Donald Trump for black men, for black families, but for all Americans. The wage gap that Democrats love to lecture about, the wage gap in 2019 was actually shrinking under Donald Trump's administration, his economic policies, his energy policies, and his regulatory policies. I just policies. go back to the tax So that's the agenda question. that black men are looking at. Okay, thank you for that. The tax cut question, again, go ahead. I, would, I would imagine that Kamala mm. Harris would say, or would ask the question about how tax cuts for wealthy Americans will help uh, the, the black community. What's the answer to that? Well, Kamala Harris would say something like that, but we know that she's wrong because economically she's been wrong for the last 1,400 days. If you look at Tax Cut and Jobs Act, it cut, it cut tax rates across the board, mostly for middle-class families. So this is why wages adjusted for inflation for black families was higher under Donald Trump than any other administration in the history of our country. That is a record of economic success. Let me just quickly play for you what uh, former President Obama said exactly on this question of the economy uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah, it was pretty good because it was my economy. It wasn't something he did. I had spent eight years cleaning up the mess that the Republicans had left me the last time. He didn't do nothing except those big tax cuts. How do you respond to that? Very easily. Um, I was working in finance during Barack Obama's administration. Let me tell you, the economy under his last, especially the last five years, was growing at about one to one and a half percent per year. I think at the time, President Obama was saying that, you know, this era of, of large economic growth is something of the past. We're going to have a more consistent economy. Well, in his words, a consistent economy meant one that barely grew. So when Donald Trump came in, he brought his tax cut policy in, which cut taxes across the board for everybody in our country, coupled the fact that he did cut massive regulations from the Obama administration. And what did we see? Economic growth in the United States went from one, one and a half percent under Barack Obama to three, three and a half percent under Donald Trump. Wages adjusted for inflation, like I said, because it's yeah. the truth, increased for every, every, sub, every subgroup of Americans in our country. The wealth gap was closing. We were actually booming economically far more than we did under Barack Obama. So that's a cool statement he made on the stump, but it's not true. Congressman, before I let you go, I, I do want to ask about sure. uh, a, a law that Congress passed, a new version of the Electoral Count Act. They passed it two years ago, and it makes it harder to object to certifying election results on January 6, 2025 and beyond. Some uh, Trump allies have argued that's unconstitutional. The House Speaker hasn't taken a clear position. Should Congress follow that law in certifying the 2024 presidential election? Look, I think when you're talking about the election this November, the thing that people want is that local jurisdictions follow the law passed by the states. As long as everybody does that, there's not going to be any problem um, certifying this election this November. But what really matters about this election are the issues facing the American people, not the Electoral College Count Act. Because what we need is a president who's going to secure our border, actually make right, our foreign my, policy my question, time, uh, be sir. strong again is, and make sense again. That's what matters. Law. Are you going to follow the new law about certifying as, And I've been very clear, Dana, as long as states and jurisdictions follow election procedures in their states, there will be no problem for me or anybody on Capitol Hill. All right. Well, that's a giant um, loophole that you're, you're leaving there, which 
Um, there's no evidence that that has not happened. It didn't happen in 2020. That's not a loophole. It, That's actually not a loophole, Dana. It, it is. And if you look at what happened in Pennsylvania, Arizona, and other jurisdictions in 2020, they did not follow election procedures passed by the no, state legislature. That's an empirical no fact. Evidence of widespread fraud that went through what 60 court cases. And even Dana, I did not say president. fraud. You said fraud. What I'm talking about, and, and if you want to talk about it, let's be clear. You had the state of Pennsylvania where the state Supreme Court said they would count ballots three days after the polls closed in Pennsylvania in 2020. That's a violation of state okay. law passed by the legislature, signed by the governor. But that's what happened in Con the state of Pennsylvania. That's one example. Okay. Well, Congressman, a lot, this has been litigated, uh, and I'm assuming that a lot more of it will be litigated. Let's just hope. Uh, that everybody watches the votes counted and takes a breath and lets them be counted, particularly in Pennsylvania, which doesn't start to count by law until Election Day. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you.